No way, no way, I need to go to a quiet corner. Good morning and welcome to another work week vlog. If you're new, hi, I'm Anna, so glad you're here. I'm a medical social worker working in a children's hospital on the cardiac floor and this is a full week of work. But I also love showing just like life outside of work and other things to enjoy on these videos. This morning I woke up early and I came downstairs and I was reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire illustrated edition. I made myself a smoothie, got my lunch all ready to go. So I feel like we're starting off the Monday on a good foot, but I feel like I don't know what this week holds, like what it looks like. So I'm definitely gonna have to spend time at work today <laughs> going through the schedule seeing what it will look like this weekend was really good it felt short but also like a satisfactory length of time at the same time saturday was a huge huge rest day i did my long run in the morning so it was nine miles and then the rest of the day was super restful just like laying around watching gray's anatomy still picking up some stuff trying to consolidate as much of like the unhoused items in our new apartment as i could to try to get as much visual clutter away which i think we're definitely making progress on even though it definitely also is not perfect at the this point and then Sunday was a lot of rest again and then last night Zach and I went and walked the belt line and also got some ice cream from butter and cream on the belt line which has become such a favorite but feeling pretty recharged rested headed into this week I've had a lot of training time in my job I started back in May I've actually been there two months now but I have just begun to get my own families so I assume that that will carry into this week and I'll try to be really purposeful with this vlog about letting you know like actually what I'm up to in a day so in the spirit of doing a more in-depth week in the life of social work, especially now that I'm actually kind of doing things by myself, but in the morning, whenever I get into work, I do clock in and then the first thing I do is log into my email just to check the inbox. Some emails that may be important to me are reminders of events that are coming up, maybe some follow-ups with coworkers when I do like a handoff for a client or sometimes outreach from community agencies. Like if I referred someone, getting feedback on that or if I ever, they need more information for a referral, they'll email me. After I check my inbox and get that number down to zero, I go and check the census, which is just the big master list of who's in the hospital, except I'm looking specifically at my units, which include an ICU and a step down unit. So the things that I'm looking for on the census are maybe who went home of my patients, who's no longer there, who's new. There's more new people on Mondays just because I'm not there over the weekend. Sometimes who's headed home, I can see who's discharging soon. While checking the census, I'll also see if I've been assigned any new patients by my supervisor. So if I do get a new patient, I'll drag them over into my little list on Epic and and then I can kind of look more deeply into their chart, figure out why they're there, if they've been here in the past, just so I have an idea going in before I meet them of maybe how long of a stay it might be. Obviously things come up that are unexpected, but doing a chart review just kind of gives some context for the family and the patient. I'll print out the census to physically have, I'll highlight my patients and make notes of any goals for the day that I have for myself. So today that meant that I was just trying to check in with three of my families. And then I also had one new person that I was going to do an introduction with. I don't go to patients' rooms that early in the morning just because lots of times they may be asleep or the parents may be asleep and it's hard to get good sleep when you're in the hospital so I never want to wake anybody up but at 10 a.m. we have interdisciplinary rounds which is different than medical rounds because it is a whole lot shorter and it is just for the ICU patients and we have these daily because plans of care may change daily whenever someone is in that high acuity of care that ICU status so they may not go super deep into details about the medical status because those are the things that I'm not trained to understand but they may let us know what the plan is. Are they going to the step down unit? Do they have any setback? If there's been any things that have come up among the nurses and doctors that they feel like needs to be addressed or they want to dive deeper into with the family, then they may let us know there. But after those rounds is whenever I actually go and start to see family. Today, I had several families that moved from the ICU into the step down unit. I had one introduction that I was doing, just introducing the family to myself, to social work services, and then also to a few logistical type things that I just want to make sure families know whenever they come into the hospital. 
such as where are they planning to sleep? We have several options for that, like Ronald McDonald House or sleep rooms on site, or they can stay bedside with their kid, things like discounted parking, and then also making sure that there's a plan for eating. Now, for some families, that's not a worry at all. They know they're going to get food. They have means to get food. They may go to the cafeteria, they may get Uber Eats, they may be going home to make meals. And for other families, that may be something that there needs to be more assistance with. And it's always important to make sure that caregivers are eating. So that's something that we'll check for. I'll introduce support group services to them. Being in a cardiac floor, lots of times for kids, that is a lifelong type of condition. So there's lots of support that's given both to the kids and to the families of kids with cardiac conditions. I'll also just work on building rapport and start to learn social factors that may be affecting the family, like how many other children they have, how far away they live, will they be at work while the kid is hospitalized, will they be on leave, do they need help with FMLA, do they need a work excuse, just those types of things. Then I head back to the office to start typing notes, and then afterwards I headed to the dungeon to pick up some meal assistance bags for a family, and I dropped those off. I took lunch myself, and then I had my first social work peer group today, which is group supervision. This is where social workers come together, and sometimes they'll staff cases, like go over a case that they have that maybe they're struggling with, support each other, work with each other. After the group, I did another round on the unit to see if any other parents were present. And I talked to a family of mine whose child had had surgery that day and offered support, just kind of got some updates and supported the mom while she processed through all that had happened in the day. After that, I headed back to the office to give you notes. And so if I edited this how I was hoping to, then you've already heard all that I've done in the day, which is kind of exciting. And I don't have to do a recap now, but I'm obviously back home. I am eating dinner. Tonight is a rest night from running. So I'm just going to do some YouTube work while I eat and chill is the goal. Happy Tuesday. The air quality is bad again and I am bummed by it. It is already at like 145 little air quality index and it is early in the morning which is theoretically whenever it's at its best in the day. So I am planning to run Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week but the kind of like cutoff that I gave myself whenever I researched it last time whenever the air quality got really bad was that if it's above about 120 I'm not gonna run just because then it's like going outside and breathing in not great air is like either more harm or like just evens out basically about like the cardiovascular being good for your lungs versus the bad air being bad for your lungs. So we'll see how that goes. Today I think it's a pretty non-structured day at work. I don't think there's too much extra going on. I say that, I could be totally wrong, but I'll try to do the same like voiceover type thing. I think that's really fun. And I think that that's a good way to do like an in-depth medical social work vlog because obviously a lot of my weekly vlogs lots of the times are some work and then also just like my life because that's what a week is and I think it's good sometimes to see like oh the work-life balance or like I know that I have people who make vlogs and I'm like you know invested in their hobbies and what they're interested in but I also know that a lot of people who have followed recently subscribed recently are interested in the like medical social work aspect of it and so this will be a good video to like send people to and be like this is what I do in a day at least as of now obviously every day is gonna be different every week is gonna be different every month is gonna be different I slept well but my throat hurts because of the air. We have our air purifier up there that's just working overtime. <laughs> We're making a chili tonight in the slow cooker or so it'll be ready tonight preparing it this morning which like it's so delicious and we're so excited about the slow cooker because that got it pretty recently it's been like two or three weeks at this point but it is kind of funny having chili on a 94 degree summer day <laughs> but it'll be so good. Good morning and welcome to Tuesday, little work day in my life voiceovers that I'm doing in an effort to tell you everything that I'm doing this week. Today, I did the same thing in the morning, but on Tuesday, it is a lot less checking for updates and everything than Monday, just since I was just there the day before. But I still check the census for updates or for new patients. I see if anyone new has been assigned to me. Today, no one new was assigned to me. Honestly, the census is pretty high right now, which means that there's not a lot of turnover day to day because there's not a lot of bed space day to day. But that comes and goes in waves. And then I tried to log on to my work phone that 
the hospital uses to communicate with other staff and I could not. <laughs> so I had to call the help desk to put in a little IT ticket for them to help me. I guess what happened is that they did like a software update for everyone last night, but my phone was dead last night and so it just didn't work for me. So they were able to update me and I got to log into an entirely new interface. I feel like I jumped from like 2010 to 2023 as far as the app goes. I didn't see any patients before rounds because I like to let them sleep in, but I went to interdisciplinary rounds where they talk about the ICU patients and if there's anything new that has happened or if anyone new has come in. And then afterwards, that's when I went and actually started communicating with my patients, doing my work for the day. I was able to catch up with a mom that I hadn't seen in a while. She had applied to a grant program and was in the process for another assistance application. And so we mostly just talked about the process. She really didn't need me to assist in the applicating. Nope in the applying. So in that case, I'm just providing support and I'm also offering those resources because lots of times until you're hospitalized, you may not know what is available to you to help while you're hospitalized. I checked in on the family that I gave meal assistance to yesterday. They didn't need anything additional today. And on Tuesday nights in the unit, they actually deliver dinner to everyone's room. So that's very nice. Different people sponsor it each week, but Tuesday nights, everyone gets dinner. And I also called a mom that I hadn't talked to since last week just to discuss if there's been any updates since I keep missing her whenever she's in person. And we also discuss transportation resources because that is a big thing is being able to get to and from the hospital whenever you have a little one who is sick especially if you don't live too close that was really it for the day I did all of my notes for those but like I said it was a slow day and then now I'm home and I'm gonna have a dinner of chicken chili that was in the slow cooker all day that I mentioned earlier and the air quality is still so bad that I think I just cannot go on my outdoor run tonight and so I'm going to head to the gym instead which I used to be such a huge gym girly like every single workout I did was weightlifting four to five times a week weightlifting and whenever I started running I had the intention I was like oh running will just add into my workout routine but I'll still be going to the gym I'll still be lifting and it just was too much honestly and so I really have just switched entirely to running which I know it's good to involve strength training while being a runner as well I just haven't done that I really have entirely switched but since I can't go outside today I figure might as well go I don't know yet what I'll do it's kind of fun going back after not being there for a while it'll also be weird because since I haven't weight trained in so long I'm so sure that I've lost so much strength which is okay because I'm gaining strength in other ways with the running but as far as like actually lifting weights go I'm so sure that I've lost a lot of strength just because I haven't been doing it but then after that I should be set to just kind of chill tonight as always I want to read I did a little bit of YouTube work on my computer right when we got home just because I had a thumbnail that I wanted to get just entirely ready so that I would be all caught up editing and then like wouldn't have to keep all of the drafts on my computer like I kind of clean out my iMovie too once I had everything finished so I finished that out and then I also just scheduled a appointment with a primary care doctor because I had an OBGYN appointment that was supposed to be next week and I just got a message that it was canceled and so I really wanted to get a primary care doctor regardless because I don't have one right now and so I figured okay my OBGYN is canceled and my primary care offers like pap smears and that type of services as well then I just scheduled one for a primary care doctor but it's not until September but I got put on the wait list for if any earlier appointments come available but that's what I've been up to. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to my cabinet. I am exhausted. And the good news though, the air quality is so much better today than it was yesterday. So I think I'll actually get to run tonight and probably reach a whole new level of exhaustion, but we'll wait until that happens to worry about it. I forgot to tell you this yesterday because I didn't really talk to you too much yesterday beyond the recap. But yesterday, whenever I went to go have lunch, I brought the leftovers that we made the day before. That was this like beef slow cooked with green chilies. And whenever I'd had it for dinner, I had it with chips. And so I feel like the spiciness of it was kind of mitigated, which was really great. I loved that. But that also means that whenever I brought it to lunch with me, I didn't bring chips or we out of chips. And I was in the hospital cafeteria. So around like a lot of people and I like open up my little kind of like chili stew thing happening and I warmed it up 
all ready, everything. It was so ready to go. I get this big spoonful. I take a bite and I like aspirate it. Like I totally choke. Like it goes down the wrong hole. So I'm sitting there trying not to like obnoxiously cough, but like also like very much needing to cough to the point that there starts being like a tear that just like will not stop forming. <sighs> just a like, continuous tear coming out of my eye while I'm like, <coughs> <coughs> at my little table and then once I finally like get a good cough in it was like all of the chili part of it I swear like coughed up into my nose to where it was so spicy and it like it was painful and then that just made my continuous tears start again and I I fully after just one bite packed up my things and I walked out of the cafeteria because I was like I will not be here I do not want to be observed while I am having lunch I attempted my lunch in the cafeteria I failed at it and I was able to find like a kind of like quieter corner across the street not even in the hospital anymore that I then finished my lunch but I just felt very chaotic and I felt like <laughs> I just feel like eating in public sometimes you don't think anything of it and then sometimes it's like no way no way I need to go to a quiet corner I will exit the building to a quiet corner last night they didn't end up getting to be a nice chill night I did go to the gym but I only probably was there for like 20 minutes or so I definitely have lost strength and like my body is not used to moving in a weightlifting type of way anymore but then i also went to the library to pick up the book that i had on hold which is riley sager's new release called the only one left which i've heard like very mixed things about it but i also have liked riley sager's books in the past that i've read like home before dark i like the last time i lied i like house across the lake Mm, was fine didn't love but before then I still need to finish Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire which takes forever because it's a long book and then I'm also currently reading The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand because I've been bringing that to work with me because Harry Potter is so big so this morning I'm gonna get breakfast ready I'm gonna get myself ready and then today I think I have too much scheduled in the day we have the rounds like we do every day we have the social work huddle where social workers just kind of come together but that's literally like five minutes probably less let me see if there's anything else waiting for me in my day no oh good thing i checked i have to go in early this morning to get a blood draw to see if the shots that i got last month actually took Whew, good thing i checked that okay by early like 7 30 instead of like 7 45 when i've been arriving but getting a blood draw <laughs> All right, Wednesday work day. I went in early, like I said, and I did go to employee health and I got my blood draw. I was such a big girl about it. <laughs> in the morning, just like usual, I checked the census for any updates or any new patients. I was assigned one new surgical family and the census was still super high. Also when checking the census, I found out that one of my patients had coded the night before and had gotten moved back to intensive care. So I knew that that was a family that I would want to check in with that day. I went and found the surgical family to provide support, help acclimate to the hospital. They were already checked into the Ronald McDonald house House, so we were good to go on that front and I was able to answer several questions for them about how visitation works and how the unit will work once their kid is out of surgery and onto the unit. I headed to interdisciplinary rounds which by now you know what those are. We do them every single day for the ICU and then I walked around and I didn't happen to see any parents that I was looking for so I headed back down to my office to write a note. After that I headed back upstairs to social work huddle which is whenever all the social workers come together just to give some updates, check in, hear any announcements that our managers may have and then I took my lunch and after lunch I was able to catch the family that had moved into the intensive care unit so I was able to provide support talk with them check up on previous resources that we had talked about they actually found resources that I hadn't even given them were able to apply to them so I was able to provide some assistance with that and overall just focus on you know psychosocial factors outside of the hospital that are affecting care and doing what I can in my role to help support them that was mainly it at work today and then after work I went on a five mile run And now I'm here, showered, clean. I got a little jar of the Fresca that we have left with a lime in it, so that's gonna be refreshing and wonderful. And then whenever I'm out of it, I brought over my leftover orange juice to have that too. <laughs> Something about a little drink as a reward for a long day. Not in a bad way, long day. It just felt like a long day. I am really trying to finish Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I feel like in my head it's a normal sized book, which is why I'm surprised by how long it's been taking me. But really, it's not a normal sized book. It is a rather large book, but I'm getting to the good parts towards the end. I'm about to get to the, the third challenge. I feel like in doing the voiceovers for the day, I don't really have too much to update you on now. 
<laughs> Other than just that it was another good day. We're over halfway through the week. Tomorrow's day is going to be pretty meeting heavy, but we have the step down units rounds, which only happen once a week because since they're a lower acuity of care, they don't need to be talked about every single day. For the interdisciplinary team, the doctors round to like normal every day. And then that goes pretty much straight into the ICU rounds. And then that goes straight into a CEU event that we're having that is about like trauma-informed care, I believe, like how to better be trauma-informed in giving care. So I'm kind of excited for that. By now it's Thursday, so you already know how I start my days. I feel like you could just recite it back to me if you wanted to, but I looked at the census this morning. I it was not assigned to any new patients and a few surgicals got canceled just due to a high census right now. And so there weren't any new surgicals for me to introduce myself to either in the beginning. But Thursday is a little bit different because we do have the interdisciplinary rounds for the acute care unit. So so I called into those, they're not in person. And then after that, I walked with one of my coworkers who had been notified by a PA that there was a family who was going to need a cab voucher home. So we walked up to plan with them. We needed to get a third party release form because anytime that a child is discharged to someone who is not their legal guardian, we need obviously like written permission from their legal guardian. So that was part of today. And then we went to the interdisciplinary rounds for the ICU. At 12 today, we had another CEU event. This one was about strengthening trauma-informed care in hospitals from a social work standpoint. So it was nice to get an overview of that. That took about an hour long. I got some snacks beforehand, probably not the healthiest snack options, but the cheapest snack options from the vending machine and I did love them. I took my own lunch and then I got a text from my supervisor that there was a family from the cath lab, which is something that I can talk about later, but remember I'm in cardiac and so the cath lab like has to do with that. If anyone knows what a cath lab is and would like to explain it in the comments, I'm so sure you can do it better than me, but they're staying overnight in the CACU and so I just did a little social work introduction to them but it should be a pretty short stay. After that, I did documentation that I had for the day and then I headed home. And now I'm here and it is very dark. It's literally 6.15, so like it should not be this dark, but there is a big line of storms that is coming through. I am supposed to run tonight, so I'm just gonna wait for those storms to pass through because it is still my goal to run tonight. It was last week when I got caught in some awful storms. Does that look like something that's gonna pass through quick? We're at like the very bottom of it, so I'm kind of hoping. What will bum me out is if it's raining to a point where I can't go for a run today, but I'm like sitting here waiting. Maybe I should just go to the gym instead. That would just be me missing two runs in a week. I don't know, to be determined. Thank you for joining me in this week's vlog. I hope you enjoyed the in-depth part of it, like talking more about what I did in each day. Obviously, I kind of fell off a little bit towards the end of the week. <laughs> But a lot of the days consist of similar things, even if it's like for different people or different families. And so I hope that the days that did get the in-depth work part of it that were beneficial to you. And you can kind of see like more of what a day-to-day -day actually looks like, what some of the actual like roles and responsibilities I'm doing, and maybe in a more interesting way than me just sitting down on the floor after work and trying to remember everything throughout the day. So if you like that, let me know and I can try to do more of them, definitely. We're just finishing out the week though by relaxing, having a nice Friday night. I am vlogging this upcoming weekend, so we'll have like a little bit of change in the content. You know, keep things fresh, keep things interesting. I hope you're having a great day though, a great week, a great moment. I appreciate you so much for taking valuable minutes out of your day to watch this video that I put out on the internet. I adore you and I'll see you next time.